So I've spent the last couple days reviewing all your submissions for the contest I started, and honestly, there were some pretty clever ones here. You know, from me being up in the North Pole with an elf that was very tall, looked just like me, uh, visiting my friend John on his show, Ascending, that was always really, really fun, one of our favorite personal pastimes. I went down to Apple, unveiled the $1,000 Pro Stand, met up with uh, the non-Mike Wazowski guy, always forget his name. I decided just to clone myself. It'd be easier. I could do so many more of these memes if I just went everywhere, but unfortunately, I forgot to copyright the code, so I lost everything and now I'm selling used cars. But out of everything, there, there was one that stood above the rest. And that's how you market to a 90% male demographic. What's up, welcome to Tech YouTube, Sam here. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. We have so much to talk about for the iPhone 13 today, from new features like stronger magnets to a LTPO always on display. So exciting. All right, so if you're looking forward to it, drop a like down below to seriously help me and the channel out. And of course, make sure you hit subscribe and tap that bell for notifications to be notified whenever something new comes out so you stay in the know. Okay, so let's get started here with a story that I'm just like a little sus about. And by like a little sus about, I'm like, mm, really? This is really, mm, I don't know, because there's really no evidence for this. So unfortunately last week I had to have a sit down with you guys to talk about the iPhone 12 mini and how it is essentially on life support. Like at the best estimate, at the most progressive liberal estimates out here, they're like, yeah, iPhone 12 mini, five to 6% of all iPhone 12 sales. Obviously that is not a number that Apple wants to see. The Pro Max is nowhere hitting that low. The 12, 12 Pro are significantly higher than that. Like the 12 mini for whatever reason, actually I know why, because it's $700, which is way too expensive for the size of the phone. It is not selling. So that combined with the fact that Apple already released a new small phone in 2020, the iPhone SE, uh, it just, Hasn't been something people wanted to buy. Whatever, okay, we've been over that. But now, according to John Prosser, and I believe a, an outlet or two other than him as well, they are saying that the iPhone 13 mini is still planned. Hmm. The iPhone 13 mini is a successor to the 12 mini, obviously. I just don't see a world, like, call me crazy, where the iPhone 12 mini, which is a super cycle, major upgrade year, is not selling. And then Apple comes along with an S year, like iPhone 13 mini, and everybody's like, oh, wow, we love this phone. We haven't appreciated it as much. Unless Apple doesn't release a new version of the iPhone SE this year which is what Prosser suggests actually might be happening. Some of you have been wondering about the iPhone SE Plus or like an iPhone SE 3 model. And initially we heard that we would be seeing a new one of those this year, but it would make sense for Apple to skip the new iPhone SE in favor of releasing the iPhone 13 mini, keeping that mini sized major flagship iPhone a part of the lineup in lieu of releasing a small, affordable, cheap phone. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this. I'm just saying it makes sense for Apple to keep the iPhone 13 mini around if there is no new small phone in 2021 from them. So it's like with no new upgrade to the smallest phone and no budget phone available, maybe it will push people up and they have research to suggest that those people will buy the 13 mini. I mean, I would say that the 12 mini should be a one and done from my perspective, unless Apple drops the price significantly. Like if Apple could sell the 5.4 inch mini sized iPhone for like $550, I think it would be the perfect value, greatest phone of all time, and they would kill it. But whether it goes or stays, there are still a lot of new features we've heard about recently for the iPhone 13. And in fact, a fresh report came out from Max Weinbach, who is around 70% accurate in collaboration with Apple YouTuber Titan everything Apple Pro. We have gotten so many new details that we've never heard before. Guys, some of this stuff is wild. Uh, and it's starting to paint a clearer picture of exactly what the 2021 iPhones are gonna be. Cause like, obviously we've already heard about in-screen touch ID, 120 Hertz display, you know, no lightning port on here, A15 processor. But like those things combined is have kind of been like, mm, well, I mean, I might. You know, like that, that meme where she's like, So let's talk about the new stuff in this report. All right, first off, always on display is coming. Now, Apple has toyed around with this internally for a while, but they have never done it, likely because the hardware on the iPhone technically would support it with OLED, but it wouldn't be as battery efficient as Apple would like it to be. So for example, the Apple Watch Series 5 was the very first Apple product we ever saw with an always on display. And it makes sense, like a watch face should probably stay on all of the time. The way Apple was able to achieve this 
this is by putting a LTPO display, which we don't need to go into like the exact abbreviation breakdown. It means that Apple has control over the refresh rate. So if they want it to be 120 Hertz, they can do that. If they want 60, they can do that. If they want 24, they can do that. Or like on the Apple watch, it actually goes down to one Hertz. Like it's drawing so little power to actually have so many things happening on the screen. So Apple with this new iPhone 13 display technology will finally be able to achieve an always on display. I just think it's hilarious because like, I remember using a, a Galaxy S7 back in the day, like nine years ago that had an always on display. And like we're, we're just getting at this. Like, you know, Apple has taken their time on this feature, but if you buy the new iPhone, it's just like a perfect S year feature. Always on display. Is it laughable? Yes. Am I into it? Yes. I've, I've wanted an always on display. Apparently you'll be able to see the time and your battery percentage. And I actually worked with Ian, uh, follow him over on Twitter for these amazing renders that he custom made uh, for us and, and for you guys on the channel. He shows off what it could potentially look like. Next up, MagSafe was one of the big updates on the iPhone 12 and Apple is planning to take that a step further this year with stronger magnets, which, um, <laughs> Well, let's just let's just get the elephant out of the out of the closet. I, elephant in the, there's an elephant in the room, guys. Watch out, he can stomp all over you. <laughs> so uh, apparently, like the iPhone can interfere with like a a little thing. What is it called? My grandma had one of these um, pacemaker, like a pacemaker. So it's basically something that will regulate your heart just to make sure you don't like keel over and die. <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just go there. So yeah, they they're gonna basically make these stronger. And there's already been evidence that like the iPhone 12 series can interfere with it. Like multiple, I think studies have come out. So like maybe maybe don't hold your phone right here. Now I'm I'm like worried. I'm like, do I have a pace? No, I don't have a pacemaker. But if you do have some implant in your body, just maybe don't put the iPhone 12 there. Why would Apple be putting stronger magnets here if it's like a health risk? Well, for like the majority of the population that doesn't have an implant, you can see like a use case for the MagSafe wallet being even more securely attached because one of the only criticisms for some MagSafe accessories like the wallet has been like, it stays on very well, you know, all things considered, but like you can wiggle it somewhat easily and get it off or it could detach from your device. So with stronger magnets, you'll have a better attraction to accessories, car mounts. And I think it's gonna be a win for like 99% of users. I'm actually looking forward to this because MagSafe has been my favorite innovation on the iPhone in recent history. I just, it, it's weird to think there's like a ring of magnets in here, but I, I charge with MagSafe every night. It's actually so, so great. Weinbach also gives us information about camera upgrades, which is so rare this early on. Cause like, you know, everybody's always like, oh, what is it gonna be? What is the camera? You know, it's probably like the iPhone feature that like I would say most people use most of the time. It's, it's cameras are cool. <laughs> I'm really selling you guys today as an Apple fanboy. First off, there's gonna be a new automatic astrophotography mode. I believe this was initially destined for the 12 series and one back reported on it last year, but it never ended up shipping. Now it's going to be, so we're like, if you point your phone up at the stars to take a picture of like the moon or the stars or planets, it's going to somehow detect that scene automatically and optimize your iPhone settings for it. I mean, I think this is always cool because most people don't either A, wanna take the time or B, care enough to learn how to do like a specific the camera mode. Most people take out their phone, they hit the shutter button. So why not optimize it for the most amount of people? So when you point it up there, it will be able to tweak the scene to best capture whatever you're looking at and probably give you specific directions like, hey, you need to hold extra still for this super long exposure. So that is coming. The ultra wide camera, Weinbach Echoes, is getting significant upgrades. It's still apparently not gonna be as good as the main or telephoto lens, which I guess makes sense because it's the newest lens, but I'm also frustrated because I love the ultra wide lens. And it is objectively the weakest. Like it just lets in the least amount of light. It's the lowest quality. I think the elements in the lens are increasing to make it slightly higher quality, but I'm just still not satisfied with where it's at. Like I, I want the ultra wide to be in parity with the other lenses. To me, it feels cheap that it doesn't take as good photos all the time as the other lenses. And I, I think Apple could fix that relatively easily. But the craziest thing that Winebox says, not, not in testing, not like a maybe, not like, oh, there's a slight, like coming for sure this year is portrait mode video. I don't wanna get too technical here. The portrait mode video sounds wildly impossible, but apparently with the improvements Apple is bringing with the A15 processor, they will be able to do portrait mode video. Like obviously if somebody shoots video, I'm so excited. I'm just trying to temper myself. Yeah, you guys can tell I was like, oh, pretty much not gonna happen, pretty much impossible. But like, I'm just doing that. 
because I don't want my heart to be hurt. I have to keep it at a distance. <laughs> and if this is true, if portrait mode video is coming, then I think the A15 will be like an insane jump. Maybe the biggest jump in iPhone processing ever because going from like the A14, it just doesn't seem like we can do that now, to the A15, this iPhone is going to be powerful. And again, it would just be another thing Apple could check off, like S year upgrade, most significant speed boost. Like, does it really have a tangible impact for most people? No. But people that are iPhone enthusiasts, I'd probably call myself one of those. I'd be like, oh, speed. Uh, all right, well, maybe, uh, give me like 30 iPhones. I guess I'll take those. That's the updates for the iPhone 13. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did or you learned something new, drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe so you stay up to date on all of the latest Apple news. I've been Sam. Hope you're doing well. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace.